Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And today I will be splitting my time with the member from Calgary Confederation. I am pleased to stand to discuss Bill C-25, an act to amend the Canada Business Corporations Act, the Canada Corporatives or Cooperatives Act, the Canada Not-for-Profit Corporations Act, and the Competition Act. These amendments proposed in this bill cover a variety of objectives, but today I would like to focus on the proposal of this bill relating to the increased representation of women, as well as diversity on corporate boards and in senior management. Referring to the report that was completed by the Government of Canada Advisory Board and provided to the Minister of Staff of Women in 2013, there was a new focus put forward to increase the representation of women on Canadian boards with a national goal of 30 per cent of women by 2019. The report titled Good for Business, a plan to promote more women on Canadian boards, uh, with Michael Cooper stating, the COO from Dream Unlimited Corporation, it, from the Globe and Mail in 2014, he said, everything we do to appoint women and with a mercenary attitude to enhance our own benefits and profitability, and I think that's what makes it sustainable. I wonder where the other leaders are when they don't know successful women. It, it is important to note that while women now represent nearly half the Canadian workforce, they just hold 20.8 per cent of board positions at Canadian stock index companies. The program, it starts with one, Be Her Champion, was launched in 2014 by the Minister of Status of Women. Leaders in all fields were encouraged to make a difference. I remember that week actually quite well because, as everybody knows, when we put forward bills and motions, the Government of Canada usually provides a little portfolio. And my former boss, Joe Preston, came home to the riding and provided me with the information to do some, inform to do some work around the own community. I said to Joe that very day, I said, Joe, it's great that you're doing this for me because I look at you as one of those guys, one of those champions for us. And so today I want to speak about how men and women together have done things like that. M Joe, for instance, within his own business, he had hired once he became a member of parliament uh, a managing partner. Marcy Pierce from the St. Thomas area has become one of the most successful Wendy's owner in Canadian history and has only increased the productivity of the Wendy's Corporation in St. Thomas. And I know that it is her extreme uh, leadership and just that great work ethic that she has that has made that such a possible dream for her. I also look at myself, the ability to have the opportunity working as an executive assistant and as I always stated, I was always given a very long leash and rarely, uh, rarely pulled in for discussions. But it's because of people believing in me and giving that mentorship that today I'm able to sit in the House of Commons. Those are just some things that I wanted to discuss because I think it's really about the grassroots level of what we can do. But referring back to the report, the Good for Business, there was a summary of recommendations. And sorry, but I am going to read these recommendations because I believe that they should go on the record because these are very, very important facts. So back for the Good for Business, the report that was given to the Minister of Status of Women back in 2013, the recommendations are as following. The following summary of the recommendations is influenced by best practices from across Canada and internationally and informed by the experience and expertise of the Advisory Council for promoting women on boards Based on these factors, the Council is offering the following recommendations. Aspire to have 30 per cent over five years as a reasonable national goal to achieve gender balance, with the longer-term goal being gender balance on boards. And this initiative was started in 2014. The Advisory Council encourages the Government of Canada to build on past progress and work towards greater gender balance on its own appointments. Monitor and report on gender diversity in Government and Council appointments. Simplify and promote the GIC process, ensure greater participation and recruitment of women to leadership positions and GIC appointments by working with government agencies, including the leadership of Crown Corporations, promote networking and mentoring between public and private sector corporations, institute a, or compli uh, a comply or explain approach for moving publicly traded companies toward an identified goal without published or within published annual reports with an explanation of results and lack thereof. Promote increased representation of women on boards by mobilizing and working with key stakeholders, including prominent chairs, financial post-500 companies, national business associations, shareholder groups and advocacy organizations. 
It would be advantageous and critical to work towards adopting a strong commitment, sound implementation strategies and reporting mechanisms while maintaining flexible approaches. Making gender balance on boards a priority to be based, uh, advanced by board governance through policies, human resources and board recruitment and nomination committees. And I'd like to say at any of the boards that I have joined or have been part of in the last 10 years, those are the sort of steps that we have seen within our own community in the Elder Middlesex London area, where we recognize that the work and diversity of the group does bring greater results. The ability to, uh, for women and men and that diversity from young and old, how important it is to give different ideas and different opinions. Encouraging nomination and recruitment committees and executive search firms to ensure that equal numbers of qualified men and women candidates are presented for consideration for board vacancies. Develop a coordinated plan or pan-Canadian approach by working with provincial and territorial governments. Support the adoption of short and medium-term goals in the private and public sectors. Publicly traded companies should establish and publish through annual financial statements two- and five-year goals. Publicly traded companies should report and explain annual results uh, against this goals, reinforces required by regulatory authorities. Launch a national initiative led by the Government of Canada to encourage the private sector to attain gender balanced boards. Develop a sustained deliberate communication strategy to mobilize all relevant stakeholders. And finally, encourage private companies to emulate publicly targeted companies and undertake similar measures to increase representation of boards and women on the boards. Thank you for listening to that. I know 11 points of just reading can be quite scrutinizing, but as I indicated, I think it's important that we get that on record in the House of Commons, as this was something that in 2013 we were very, very proud to accept from the advisory board, and we saw action taken by our Minister of Status of Women in 2014 with that initiative in mind. There was, though, meanwhile, there was an in-depth rational approach to these recommendations, specifically based on the progress of women, not only in business and the labour force, but increased performance and levels of success in education, and more specifically, in business and management programs. But unfortunately, when we look at statistics space from 2012, we will find that just four years ago, that there are some very surprising statistics. Um, so therefore, some of these initiatives are important, and just kind of put it at the front of mind. There was only at one time 10.3% of women on Canadian boards. 15.9% of Fortune 500 companies that included zero on 40% of those boards, and 31% of federal GIC appointments. We know from just sitting in this House of Commons that diverse of many of our female members and their incredible success. I am proud to sit in this House of Commons with a female engineer, an orthopedic pediatric surgeon, a former associate dean from New Brunswick, a family <laughs> physician, a provincial government whip, a college athletic director, lawyers, wonderful teachers, classically trained pianists, and many, many more. We have such a diversity in this, and I think we can show what great work we can do. Now, turning to the necessary need to update the ability for corporations to communicate in other methods. That is another thing that's very, very important. Here, as member of our parliaments, we can attest about electronic communications on our day-to-day -day operations. Whether it's informing members of a vote, notice of meetings, or providing background information on bills, electronic communications has become a way of life. By providing corporations that ability to permit notice and access system, we are providing them the same opportunities that we have as parliamentarians. We all know that we cannot live without our Blackberries and our smartphones and, and our iPads. This has become the way of being a busy, busy individual. And by allowing the electronic communication, it is going to allow us to do a more active way of communicating with our memberships for those corporations and allowing people to know what's going on. It's just a better way of communicating. With over 270,000 federally incorporated corporations, this bill and the studies they have been completed over the past several years these amendments uh, to these are necessary amendments. The modernization of Canada's federal corporate governance, as announced in Budget 2015, is necessary. Key stakeholders are on side with Bill uh, C-25, including the Canadian Coalition for Good Governance and the Canadian Diversity Council. I thank the Minister of Industry for introducing Bill C-25, something many former parliamentarians will recognize from our previous government. I support this bill and support the efforts in this legislation to provide a Canadian federal framework that is up to date and will provide support for long term investment and overall contribute to Canada's economic growth. This provide, bill provides the tools to ensure that Canada is aligned internationally with the best practices, including the report for good business. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
Questions and comments? Uh, commenta, the Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague uh, for her comments uh, and reminding us of, uh, of some of the things that we are working towards. I, I just want to draw to her attention and to the attention um, of the House here that the Canadian Board uh, Diversity Council, after reviewing the comply or explain in quotation marks that term, where it's been applied, has stated that it really isn't leading to meaningful disclosure and not really a consistent, improved pace of change. So I'm just wondering if my colleague uh, and her colleagues are, are, whether you're sort of content with the snail's pace of change that occurs on board diversification when we only have these aspirational targets. Thank you. Well, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. I would like to thank the member for the question. Excellent question. And you know, when I looked at that, I also had to recognize that where there are certain boards and certain situations in which um, it's great to have the balance, but sometimes the balance is going to be a little heavy on one gender or another. Whether it's uh, organizations that you're dealing with in your community, um, sometimes the balance is not, not there because the focus might be focused on uh, a women's group or a man's group, or an athletics association. So I think when we're doing things like that, we do have to take into consideration the, the variety and the vast and broad nature of what boards do look like. So although I recognize that this kind of out clause could be an issue, um, I believe that I am inspired by what I'm, what I'm seeing here within the House of Commons, within our own communities. We have excellent women in our own communities doing great jobs and being leaders on their boards and, and in uh, man, many manufacturing institutions. I think we need to continue to inspire them, and I think we need to continue to work to be their leaders and to be their mentors. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Oshlega. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It seems that the Conservatives will be supporting Bill C-25 uh, to send it to committee at second reading, but I'd like to know if they'll also support Bill C-220, my colleague from Nanaimo Ladysmith's bill, which would strengthen gender diversity on boards of directors and in top management. A couple of years ago, my colleague Anne-Marie Day in a previous parliament brought in a similar bill and the Conservatives voted against it. However, this time it seems like they're going to vote for this bill, which uh, will also improve uh, the presence of women on boards of directors. So I'd like to know if what will the Conservatives' position be on my colleague's bill? The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much. And I think uh, first there's two parts to that answer. First of all, when we look at that bill, we recognize with the corporations that this is something that our former government was already aiming to and was announced in a variety of different bills, whether it was in the 2015 budget or just different things that our ministers had been working on. Now, part two regarding this private member's bill that was put forward by an NDP member, I will look at it. One thing that I'm always cautious of is quotas. So if there's a quota in there, then I'm going to be really scrutinizing it hard because I think uh, we have to see, is that the right thing? Is that the right leadership that we need there? So I have not looked at that bill, but when it comes to quotas, I do not support quotas. I support the best qualified, but also doing your best to have the gender parity. But we need to look at that full bill uh, so that I do understand it greater. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton. Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for an excellent speech. And it, it appears that you know the uh, Liberal government is just bringing forward legislation that the Conservatives drafted. And so I would take that as an indication from them that the Conservatives were on the right track with respect to the economy. And would my member agree? Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you very much for the member from uh, Sarnia Lambton, because you know her and I are from the same area, and we know that in southwestern Ontario, the government of Canada. Uh, previous Government of Canada was right on track. We did a great job in those areas, especially during the global economic downturn. And as you said, this is a bill, or as the member said, this is a bill that we had seen that had been studied by our previous government, um, information regarding even things to do with women that was put forward by our status of women minister and our industry minister. There was great work being done by our government. Unfortunately, we didn't get to finish that work, but I do look forward to it in 2019. 